Constitution 28.4 says clearly that it is the constitutional responsibility of Dáil Éamon, Dáil Éamon, to hold the government to account. That's its constitutional responsibility. It is not vested in the Shannon. Not vested in the Shannon. It's also important to understand that when Shannon there was set up in the beginning, that the original intention was that it would engage with civic society in a way that people and organizations and members of the public would be represented and could have engagement in the uh, process of consideration, analysis, preparation, and implementation of legislation. What, what surprises me is like, there are so many people protesting in small groups here and there. And I, I think, why don't they unite? Why don't they come all together as a big protest? Welcome to Shannad Aaron. The first Shannad sat on the 11th of December 1922. The members of Shannad Aaron are referred to as senators. There must be the right of people to inform themselves. This is the greatest anomaly at present. There is free availability of every sort of contraceptive, abortifacient or not abortifacient, and there is no responsible literature either to warn people or inform them or give them the sort of knowledge they're entitled to. thinking about how to vote this is what I'd say think about the clip you've just seen the Taoiseach has just refused to debate the issue imagine David Cameron saying I'm going to abolish the House of Lords but I'm I, I'm not willing to um, to debate it on television imagine Barack Obama saying I'm going to do, I, I am going to ask the American people to abolish the US Senate but I am unwilling to debate that issue. And by the way, if you don't do what I tell you to do or do what I ask you to do, I'm not going to make, I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to make any of the changes we could make to improve it. You don't really need to know more than that. There are good arguments on both sides, but that is enough for me. If you as Taoiseach are unwilling to debate whether or not we take away one of the two houses of our democracy, then there is something deeply, deeply suspicious about what you're trying to pull off, in my opinion. Yeah. The banks have taken our lives. They've got to pay according to our society and according to our constitution, because our constitution empowers the individual in every way, shape and form. We are above the government, we are above the law, we are the law. If the Irish people ever stand into that power, they will be a force to be reckoned with. And I suppose I really want to use this to suggest to people that the constitutional reform that's coming down the track say no at this stage this government we couldn't trust them with anything anything they've said to say yes to we should say no to and keep doing that every step along the line don't change our constitution it's the best in the world what we need to change is our attitude towards it and to stand into it okay but we work in a different way absolutely we're not the kind of stuff the rubbish that goes on in the dole 
where most of them throughout their entire careers, the poor creatures, they go in with ideals and they're left there pushing a button. Absolutely. Or walking through a thing and doing what they're told and they're not allowed to open their gob unless they're told they can. In the Senate we argue, we persuade. I've had three or four bills withdrawn, I've had them altered, I've had amendments, so have all my colleagues. That's the way we do it. And when it comes to the referendum, being honest with you on the Shannon, I hadn't made me mind up until Andy Kelly came out and asked me to vote yes. I'll be voting no! Yeah. And I want all you to vote no! And all you to say to Enda Kenny, up yours Enda, you're coming to an end, we're going to bring you down, no matter how long it takes. So let us, the citizens of the European Union, who want to make a real union together, to move out of the dark into the light, and achieve something indeed worthy of Friedrich Schiller's poem, originally called Ode to Freedom, go to it. Garat Mila Maha Gigeler, thank you. The people of Ireland expressed their own welcome in the streets, but the Parliament of the nation spoke for the nation too in a ceremony simple but unique. For the first time in the history of the state, the two houses, Doyle and Shannon, sat together. At the same time, Ireland is part of Europe, associated with the Council of Europe, progressing in the context of Europe, and a prospective member of an expanded European common market. Thus, Ireland has excellent relations with both the old and the new. The confidence of both sides and an opportunity to act where the actions of greater powers might be looked upon with suspicion. The central issue of freedom, however, is between those who believe in self-determination and those in the East who would impose upon others the harsh and repressive communist system. And here your nation wisely rejects the role of a go-between or a mediator. Ireland pursues an independent course in foreign policy, but it is not neutral between liberty and tyranny, and never will be. and there being substantive political reform here. We're told about these much vaunted committees which Enda is going to bring in. Good Lord, how serious is he about the committee system? A country that is a bailout program that is bankrupt that had the IMF and the Troika knocking on the door and he kicked the only international banking and finance expert off the finance committee? Was it because he was bad at finance? No, it's because he disagreed with them on abortion. A country that is critically, critically dependent on our food sector. The only food scientist, trained food scientist, that there was on the health committee, which is responsibility for food safety, at a time when we had a major food safety scandal involving contamination of our meat supply, kicked off because he had the temerity to insist that Enda stand up to his written in black and white pre-election promise given to every constituent in Roscommon that the A&E in Roscommon Hospital would be kept open. A country that is critically dependent on education of our, our single biggest asset, which is our human capital, the only PhD educationalist on the Education Committee, Fidel Mahili Eames, kicked off. So I do not have any faith that the replacement for the Shannon will in fact bring in more expertise. And finally on the cost issue, you're wrong, Leo. The Oireachtas Commission has stated that they cannot verify the 100 million figure. The figure is 5.9 million. The 100 million figure is based on the ludicrous assumption that the current cost of processing questions raised by our citizens of their parliament, at present many of which are channeled through the Shannon, will cease to be asked. Is it a good idea to have questions asking fewer citizens asking fewer questions of their government? I do want to say something about the Shannon. Yes. I want to say there are a whole lot of lies going on. And you see them on the posters, 20 million, that's rubbish. It's about 4 million. Uh, and in fact, if you take into account the salaries, uh, the maintenance, all these other things that weren't added in, we're probably going to have to pay to abolish this challenge. It'll cost money.
No, I would say to people to vote no for the referendum. Um, the disintegration of the Oireachtas is another part of this government's plan, you know, driven by the Troika and the people from the EU to destroy Ireland's sovereignty. It's uh, the destruction of the Oireachtas, the concentration of power in the Dáil is a sinister move and it should not be supported. I'm here today to get people maybe to vote no for this referendum because it's not in our best interest. What we need to do is to reform the Shannad. The Shannad needs to be reformed, maybe by ordinary civilians, not maybe uh, not an old boys club or a okay. retirement home for uh, politicians. Hmm. Or how much is this election going to cost? How much is this um, referendum going to cost? All the posters and all the people they have out canvassing, they all cost money as well. And how much is that costing as well? Uh, well, my name is John Moore. Um, I'm a primary school teacher. Uh, I'm currently working in Trim. And uh, regarding the, the, the uh, referendum on the Senate, personally, I'm going to vote no because I feel that if we vote, if we get rid of the Senate, it's going to be an attack on our democracy. I know people have a lot of issues with uh, politicians' expenses and the costs, etc. But I just feel that this is not the right way to reform politics. I feel that it's a case of maybe throwing the baby out of the bathwater. And I think that there's a spin campaign going here on part of the government. They're saying that they're interested in saving money or saving, you know, reducing the number of politicians. I really, really don't believe that. And I think it's very, it's a very, very, it's a spin campaign. Um, as I say, the Senate has a very, very important place in our democracy and it was set up like at the turn of the Republic and it, it has become something that it was not never meant to be and that's what we need to do. We need to bring it back to what it sh should have been at the very beginning. If he wants us to vote no, he'd actually come out and make his case. But because he's not doing that, I'm voting no because I suspect that he actually can advance a good story for it. It definitely needs to be reformed. We don't need to actually get rid of it, but we need to have an understanding that if we vote yes, we could be actually centralising more power and control into fewer hands. I like the idea that centralisation shouldn't exist. Mm. We should always keep things decentralised so nobody can ever take over, whether it be a despot or a tyrant. We could always have a separation of power where people can actually live peacefully and be accountable for all their actions. Okay, thanks very much. Sure. I think we should all vote no. Why is that? The Shannon is abolished. It gives too much power to like the current government. And we know how corrupt they are, we can't trust any decisions they make. Do you understand about the Shannon at all? Well, yeah, it's our only protection, really, I feel, that we have to, to make the government make a, try to make a fair decision. Um, if we close down the Shannon, the government can literally do what they like. We're basically, basically crippled. So, I mean, reform the Shannon. There's absolutely no way. Vote no, 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 all the way. We vote no, vote no, and keep the Shannon. Yeah. Basically, I'm asking people in the up-and-coming referendum on Friday to vote no. I don't agree with the Shannon in its current uh, form. However, I think getting rid of it is giving more power to the people who are making decisions to destroy our lives on behalf of the banks, i.e. Enda Kenny. In the up-and-coming referendum, you're going to be asked to vote to get rid of a very important part of your democracy. We want reform, not abolition. We want to keep the Senate, we want to make it more democratic, we want you, me and everyone else to be able to vote on who goes in there. The Senate is an important part of our democracy.
It's brilliant. You are a very important person. Thank you very much. You deserve the very best. You can make a difference. A true republic, a better future for us all, is possible. But if you do not believe in these ideals, you not only betray your country, but yourselves. So I'll be voting no to vote for Andrews on Friday. Marcus Howard, test one, two, three. Not only that, I had to laugh when I saw the Labour Party poster which said, um, one country, one people, one parliament. No problem. Did you ever hear that rhythm before? <laughs> Hello? Ein Reich, ein Volk, ein Führer. No, thank you. 